Hey, it is time to do the video you have all been waiting for, which is all about tax prep. Yay, who else loves tax prep? I do. So taxes can really, really suck or they can be really, really good and cool and fun. And I don't know about you, but I actually look forward to doing my taxes every year because I love seeing how much money I actually make with my business. So they're gonna suck for you if you suck at preparing for them. So you guys all have tools at your fingertips. If you're on the Diva Squad team, this is on our team page. Um, if you're not and you want this information, just let me know, I can send it over to you. Um, but we have what is called the Pure Romance Tax Organizer. That document you will want to have handy at all times as you are preparing your taxes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a screen share here with you and let's take a look at what I am talking about. So I'm going to go here. Um, I'm going to go here because the one I'm showing you guys is a little different than the one I use myself. I'm going to show you the one that I use myself as well, but I want you to see the one that I'm talking about. So this tax organizer, it came directly from corporate. So it's not something that I made up. It's not me, you know, putting stuff on a piece of paper and sharing it with you. It literally came from corporate my first conference that I ever went to, they gave this to us. So it's called the tax organizer. And this is going to give you a list of all the information that is pertinent to your business that you track and you know that you're able to claim. Now, a little side note before we go any further with this training, what I'm about to tell you is how I prepare for my personal taxes. I file them myself. I do all the prep. I've gone to CPAs. I've gone to accountants. I've talked to the corporate accountant. Okay. So I've asked the questions I've needed to ask. I know what is good for me and I know how I file my taxes. It does not mean you are going to file the exact same way. Okay. So this is not tax advice. I'm not able to be held accountable for anything you may hear from me. If you do it the way I do it and you do it wrong or it doesn't work for the system that you're using, it's not my fault. This is me clearing my name and stating that I am simply sharing with you how I personally prepare for my taxes and what works for me. Good? Okay. So let's just go through this tax organizer really quick. Um, I'm going to go over this. I'm going to show you how I've implemented this into my preparations and how I track it physically. So your tax organizer. Um, each year, you're going to want to print one of these out. I print it out on the first of the year and I use it throughout the year. But you're going to want to know what your total sales were for the year. And that is before your tax shipping and discounts and so on, like literally what your sales were. You also need to know how much money you collected from clients, whether it was at a party, an outside order, any, any dollar paid to you for shipping is an expense. And then you definitely need to know your, over, your override, um, which is what is going to come on your 1099. Now, just a little side note for you guys. If you are, get a 1099 from the company, which... For most people, it is rare unless you are selling a lot or getting a lot in overrides. If you get an o or 1099 just because of your sales, it is going to be blank, except I just got mine in. Except on box nine, okay, box nine says payer made direct sale of 5,000 or more of consumer products to a buyer for resale. That box will be checked on this document. If you did that, the rest of the document is blank, guys. The numbers all come from you. This is my 1099 miscellaneous because I was paid out $49,000 in bonuses. Um, that is overrides, trips, um, free product, being on board, anything that is a commissionable payout will come on a 1099 if it's over, I believe, $600. Again, don't quote me on it, but I'm thinking that's what it was um, in the past. So if you did not do 5,000 in sales, or you did not make over 600 bonuses, you will not get a 1099, but that does not mean that you cannot claim your business. It just means that there's no report already made to the IRS about it, basically. And again, all your numbers come from you. Now, your cost of goods sold. This is your, um, what your inventory was at your cost at the end of the last year. Okay, so if you just started your business in, um, 2018. <laughs> I always get confused because we're I'm talking about last year. If you just started your business in 2018 and you had inventory in stock, you will have a number in that box. Okay. So it is whatever you have had in stock on December 31st. If you're watching this video today, it is February 8th and you never did a final inventory count. You can go back and figure it out. 
on a rough estimate of what you think you had in stock. You need to figure it out at your cost. So how I do this, and I learned this a couple years ago, is I save all my shipping receipts that corporate sends. Yes, I know you can look them up, but why bother wasting your time? You get one with every shipment, just save the dang thing. It is going to save you a lot of time and resources later on. What I do to figure out what the cost of my products are that I have in stock, I take my year end inventory list, which I don't think I printed yet. Um, it's literally, I just make a list of everything that I had in stock and I will go back and I will look at my most recent invoice and I have not done this yet for this year, so you will not see it on here, but I take my last invoice from corporate and so my last invoice last year was December 23rd. I ordered seven Afterglow. If I had three of those still in stock on December 31st, I took what the cost of those was and that's how I figure out how much it costs to have in my inventory. There is an article that I can share with you on how to do this, but it's literally, I just look through this whole stack and find everything I had in stock. Now some stuff, I might have it in stock on December 31st and I didn't buy it. The last time I bought it was February 15th of 2018. I will go that far back until I find every single thing that I had in stock. If I don't, if it's not on one of those lists, I just don't claim it. Um, your total retail net purchases at your cost. Again, that is stuff that, that number comes from those invoices. You add up literally, and you'll see this on these invoices. It's broken down on the back side here. Um, sales, shipping, tax. Okay, there's a reason it is listed out like that. And if I had bought business supplies, there would be one that says business supplies. Um, oh, I lied to you, the business supplies is on the other side. Okay, they break it all down for a reason. So when you need to come up with that total retail net purchases at your cost, you're literally gonna add up the sales total from every invoice. That is the number you write on that line. Your items taken from inventory from personal use, this is something you're gonna keep track of. So when you use a cloud of coochie, if you product test a new toy, um, anything like that, you keep track of that because it's not inventory and it's not something you sold, so it goes in differently. Um, returns and allowance is not warranty back from corporate. So somebody busts a toy and you replace it for free because it's your best friend. Um, mail gets lost and you send a replacement bottle of coochie. Anything like that would go there. And then your in ending inventory at your cost as of 1231. So that sounds like a little repetitive, but I guess I should have put dates on this. So the first one is ending value, inventory value at your cost 1231 from the previous year. So for most of you that will say zero. If you started your business before 2017 and had inventory, it will have a number there. Because you can't, basically you just can't double dip your inventory. So your inventory will look different because you're not gonna have the exact same amount of inventory that you have at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year. And you can't claim it if you already claimed it on last year's. We're not getting in that today. Um, and then the approximate date your inventory was taken. That way, if you get audited, you can say to corporate or, uh, IRS, listen, I took this on January 13th. That was a couple, you know, a couple weeks late, but it gives them an idea of how late you really were. Page two, these are expenses that you can claim. So advertising expenses, you're gonna learn that things are separated. And as you're doing your taxes, especially if you're doing them on your own, you're gonna learn that there's no right or wrong way really to break down your expenses. You just can't double dip. So you can't claim business cards here and then claim them somewhere else, if that makes sense. So advertising expenses have, or expenses that have anything to do with advertising and promoting your business. Your business cards, the, anything you order off Vistaprint, any marketing materials, if you order from Print Center, labels. So if you are buying labels because you're putting reorder labels on every product, stationery. So if you have cute little pads of paper made up or post-it notes made up with your information on them. Um, if you do any vendor events, bridal shows, that is your in-person marketing, so that's advertising. Film and film developing, you guys, you're gonna see stuff on here that's not really gonna pertain to you, so you can skip over that um, if you don't have anything. Flyers and newsletters, if you pay for Media Center, you're gonna document you know, that you're paying $15 a month here. If you do any other type of like, monthly thing, <laughs> market your business, it would go here. Greeting cards, so if you're sending cards to your clients, if you are doing stuff for your team, newspaper ads, if you run an ad in the Penny Saver, if you do any form of 
paid advertising, prizes and awards would be listed under here, promotional tools. So if you're doing a trade show and you bought, I don't know, colored highlighters with your information on them and then you're going to be giving them away. Pure romance clothing, decals, et cetera, PR gear if you buy a car decal for the back window of your car. Um, sales literature, anything else that you have bought for your business, you can list it under here. Now, when you're doing your taxes, you will break all this down if that's the way you want to do it or your accountant wants you to do it. That's how I was told to do it years ago. It's how I've done it ever since. Um, so it just, and my, my tax return looks the same every single year, the numbers change. So again, fill this out and take it with you when you get your taxes done or use it to file your taxes. Um, bad debts. Um, if it like customers, non-sufficient fund checks. So somebody writes you a bad check and it bounces and then you never recover the money from it. Um, you could put the amount there. You could also put any, um, check fees that, you know, like the return check, um, whenever I have to go and, um, cash a check at somebody's bank, if I get charged a fee, I document that. Um, so anything like that. And then uh, any other bad debts that you have, um, you just, again, need to make sure you're documenting and verifying. Dues and publications, membership and business related organizations. If you're part of a BNI or, um, any type of organization where you have a, like a annual fee that you pay to be part of anything like that, you're going to list here subscriptions to business publications. If there's something you're doing for your business that is hundred percent directly impacting your pure romance business, look into it because you can claim it here too. Free what you're paying to the post office or UPS. Um, so this would be like any money, any dime you've spent on a, a roll of stamps. Um, if you do stamps.com, if you walk into the post office and they pay, you know, you pay them to ship something that is going to be listed there. And then your shipping to pay, paid to pure romance. That's where these are going to come in handy. Again, you're going to take the shipping and handling off of every invoice on that line and take that. And you're going to add all those up and put that on that line. Because what you're going to notice is as you're doing your taxes, if you roll into money, if you claim all the money you collected, that includes tax and shipping. So you want to make sure you're listing tax and shipping as an expense when you file your taxes. Otherwise you're, you're missing that deduction. Um, and that expense insurance. If you have self-employed health insurance, this is something you'll have to look into. Um, business auto insurance. Uh, I don't think anyone here is insuring their car as a business vehicle. Um, and then general business insurance again, might not apply to you interest. This is business related interest only. Um, so if you took out a loan to buy a laptop and it's a product you're using 100% just for business, you can claim that interest. Um, property and anything like, again, computer, anything like that, that you're paying interest on, you can claim the interest. Credit card interest for purchasing property and or inventory. So if you um, put some money, put some product on the credit card, you paid off on your own. So you're not doing an IAP, but it's like, you're just, you bought it ahead and you're paying it off. You can claim that interest, but you have to make sure you're not using the credit card for anything else. So this is where you got to make sure you're familiar with the rules and that what you're doing qualifies to be claimed because you can't claim all your interest. You know, if you're buying your groceries at Target every week on that same card and paying interest, that's not, it's something you can claim. Um, legal and professional services, business related accounting fees. Um, I don't really think anyone, again, is going to have an accountant for their business at this point, but if you had somebody that you were paying to manage your books, um, if you have a um, assistant and depending on how you're deciding to pay them, that is something you would you could put here. Um, tax preparation fees. So every year when I file with TurboTax, the next year I write off, you know, the 100, 200, whatever it is that I paid. If you're having a CPA do it, if you are, you know, any, whatever you're paying to have your taxes done, you can write it off the following year. And then that brings you to office expenses. Calculator makes me laugh that is on here because I think this, <laughs> this document was made way back when, as you can see, file fax machine, copy machine, all that typewriter, like these were made way, <laughs> way back when. Um, calculator, copying and printing, if you didn't claim it anywhere else. So if you, I do this a lot where, you know, I print off stuff for the team meeting and I can claim it. Um, so I'm not claiming it under marketing. So that's the thing you want to make sure you're not claiming stuff in two places. Um, so if you print out a bunch of wish lists and you can do it through staples.com, that is a tax write off folder, staples, pens, et cetera. Anything you use in your office, tape, staples, stamps, um, 
pads of paper, like all that stuff would fall under office expense. Anything that you use in your office to run your business. Printer ink, um, your calendars. Now a little thing with the calendars, I mean, some of you might be crazy like me and use the Happy Planner. I do not claim my stickers that I buy for my Happy Planner just because I look at that as more of a fun thing versus a necessity, but anything to do with your planners you could claim. Paper, um, miscellaneous stuff, like if you bought, like I bought these shelves behind me, I claim those when I bought them. They're office furniture. Um, anything pertaining to your office you can claim. And then down here, um, you'll notice it has assets purchased for your business use. So if you bought a computer, you're gonna document the day you bought it, how much it was, and how often you're using it for your pure romance business. And it's like that with everything listed here. Um, if you bought, I don't know, say you bought a camera and you're only using it like once a month at team meetings, you're not gonna be able to claim 100% for that, okay? So that's what you need to look into is things that you can claim, but you can't claim it 100%. Repairs. So if you broke your laptop, you broke your iPad screen at a party and you had to have it fixed, that would be a write off. Retirement plan. If you're investing in any into any of these, um, double check because if you're working a full time job, um, you might, you know, again, don't want to double dip. Um, supplies. So this is paper products on Pure Romance invoices. That's when you're going to look on here and you're going to see where it says business supplies. You do not have to break out catalogs, order forms connection cards. You can just summarize it and put it in one big group. Um, baskets. So if you buy any like bins, books, CDs, DVDs, I love this. I'm, I'm always reading some sort of business boosting building book. You can claim those motivational trainings and tapes, um, packaging materials. So if you buy bubble wrap, if you buy padded envelopes, if you buy boxes, anything you buy to ship your stuff, anything you use to run your business as a tax write off. Um, ribbons and decorative supplies, storage, inventory containers, all those 31 bags you're buying up to carry your inventory to your parties, those are a write-off, and then anything else. And then we're going to talk about travel. So every time you drive to a team meeting, you know, you can write off your mileage and whatnot. You can also keep track when you do product raffle, um, because that's your meeting dues, essentially. Um, even though it's an optional thing, on paper, it does not have to look optional. Um, so this subject, or this portion of travel is if you go to world conference, national training, you went to SSW, worldwide rally, just a, a day in bus tour, the live, love, win in Rochester, anything that you do that's a travel trip. Um, this is also where you could list, like if you went to Virginia to do a party, um, if you went to a team retreat, anything that you have traveled for your business, you could record here. This is different than when you just drive three hours out of town, okay? This is like, you went to a function, this is where you were, this is how you got there, plane, car, boat, whatever. You had to stay at a hotel. You had, you know, paid to park your car at the airport. You had to take an Uber. You had to, you know, go down the throughway and pay tolls. Telephone dry cleaning, again, I think this is from way back in the day. So normally people don't have that, but if you did. Um, I also keep track of like registration fees and you'll notice how mine looks a little different than this, but I'm showing you the one that's on here that was originally given to me because mine doesn't have all this stuff. Um, I keep track of the meals. So when I'm on trips, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, if I'm just having a binge night at the bar, I don't claim it. Okay. Um, but you can claim your, your food as you're traveling while you're there. Um, Receipt is mandatory if a business meal is over $75. Um, I would suggest just getting a receipt anyway, just in case. Um, and you wanna make sure you're documenting everything. So these meals and entertainment, um, and I know there's been some changes with the tax law, definitely look into it so you're familiar. Um, we are still able to claim, like if you took a potential recruit lead out to lunch, you're still able to claim that at 100%. Um, if you're doing, like taking them to a baseball game, you can no longer claim the baseball game ticket, but if you buy them a drink and a hot dog at the baseball game, you can claim it. So there's things you need to look into, make sure you're familiar with it so you don't get yourself in a um, catastrophe, but you also need to make sure that you're documenting. So I went with Susie Q to Applebee's on September 31st at 1230. We talked about her joining the team. She wasn't ready to do it yet because she didn't have money. We're going to check back in like two weeks. Like you need to be thorough because if you get audited and you just have a bunch of like lunch with Susie, they're probably not going to let it slide. Okay. So they want to make sure that you're not taking advantage of the system because being a small business owner, there is a shit ton of stuff we can write off and some people do totally take advantage of it. So you got to make sure that you 
or tracking and being honest enough with it so you don't end up in a situation. Um, telephone expenses, this again, <laughs> not something you're necessarily <laughs> gonna be filling out. Um, and then cell phone, all this stuff. Um, this could apply if you have a home office too. Um, but using your cell phone, what's your monthly phone bill, what percentage of the time you're using your phone, that comes from you. So you need to sit back and be like, okay, realistically, how much am I using my phone for my business? Me personally, I'm using it for like 90%. Um, I don't, I don't really talk on my phone. I don't have friends that I call. Um, I have a home phone that I use to call my mom. Like you really need to sit back and be like, wait a second, how much of my time is really being spent, my phone time being spent on my business versus not. Um, so that number is going to come from you. If you share a plan, like you have your husband and your five kids on one line or one plan, you have to break it down and figure out what the cost of your line is. So you can't, you can't say, well, I'm, I use my phone 70% and then claim 70% of your phone bill. You need to know what your, your breakdown is. Again, otherwise you're going to look, look a little shysty. Um, same goes with internet. You can claim that, especially if you have a home office. Um, wages. So this is where you'd put like your office assistant. Look into this um, for sure because there's different things. I don't really think many people have assistants on our team, but if you have somebody, whether you're paying free product, cash, that sort of thing, a W-2, however you're doing it, look into it so you're familiar. Um, child care. If you have children working for you, look into that. It's a big tax break for you, for them. You got to go online and get the work or the information on it. Um, it's not something I'm familiar with since I don't have children. So um, know what's a thing and look into it. And then other expenses, um, meeting room fees. So like if you rent out a hall to do something, if you're a team leader and you take your team, um, go somewhere with your team and you, you rent, you know, a room at the Hyatt for a meeting like we do every month with our Diva Squad meetings. I can write all that off. Um, if you do open houses, like... Again, these are just other expenses, um, but also making sure you're documenting how many people are coming just to make sure you're not renting out a space and only having three people come. It's not going to be a realistic business expense. Um, estimated tax payments. You won't be seeing this until you are making a substantial amount of money in your business. Um, I think I've been paying in quarterly now three or four years. And they base it off of what you owed last year. So if you're making quarterly payments, you want to track it because when you do your taxes, you want to make sure you claim what you've already paid because they don't, they don't tell you what you've already paid. <laughs> um, and that brings us to home office expense. Now, I know there was a big conversation about that there was a change to this this year for 2018. 100% not sure. Um, I'm, doing, I'm almost finished my tax prep, but I haven't looked into the law, so you definitely have to check into that to see if anything's gonna apply to you. But how it used to be is you could um, give what the, the value of your home was, if you have land, if you made any improvements to your home, how long you've had your home, and the square footage of your home that's used for your home office. A home office has to be a separate room, and there can't be a bed in it, so it can't be your spare bedroom with a desk in the corner. Like, it legit has to be an office. If I showed you mine, I'm sitting at my desk, I have a shelf with product, I have a closet, I have a bin or a thing of um, filing cabinets, and then over here behind me I have two shelves full of stuff. My inventory normally sits on this one and then there's stuff over here. This is my shipping station over here, it's all my mailers and everything. I have a little shelf here with a bunch of stuff. And then I have like my printer, my monitor stuff, and the rest of my desk. So I personally can claim my home office because there's nothing in here that says anything else. There's no treadmill. There should be, but there isn't. Um, there's not even a futon, right? So um, you have to make sure, again, look it up, make sure you're fitting the 100% of the qualifications for home office because I'm hearing that that's the biggest one where they're catching people kind of talking out their booties about. Um, so you take the square footage of your house, the square footage of your office, and that sh that's going to give you the amount that you can claim on your home office expenses. No, you don't come up with the money or the numbers if you're doing it on TurboTax, even um, like uh, TurboTax, what's the other one? H&R Block, all of those ones, they calculate it for you. Um, what percentage of your house your home office takes up. So like if your office takes up 20% of your whole house, you're gonna be able to get 20% of all of these things. Um, your mortgage interest, real estate taxes, your homeowner's insurance, rent if you pay it, 
gas, electric, water, sewer, trash, heat, um, electric bill, Time Warner bill, internet, all that stuff, you'll get 20% as a write-off. And it does it for you. You just give it the number, it takes a 20%. Um, if you, let's say you have a home office and you have to paint it because the, you know, the wallpaper is falling off, you can write that off. Um, if you have to replace your roof, it kind of <laughs> is something you need for a home office. Look into it, you get to write that type of stuff off. Um, and then just this covers all the other extra little things. Then you have your auto expenses. Again, this is something that's up for debate. Um, in the past, I've always claimed mileage, um, which is a standard deduction. You can either choose standard or actual, but you can never switch back. So whatever one you claim the first year with your car, that's what you have to claim as long as you own your car. So I did standard with my Scion. I just bought a new car last year. So this would be my window of opportunity to say, you know what? Let me look into to actual. So let me just give you a heads up. I'm still hearing that standard is still the best way to go. Standard is you get to claim mileage. So every mile you drive for your business, whether it's to a party, a meeting, the grocery store, the bank. Um, by grocery store, I mean like if you go to Walmart and you're buying a pad of pens or a pack of pens when you're there getting all your groceries, it's a write off. Um, if you're meeting up with a client, if you're doing a delivery, every single mile you drive, I believe this year for 2018, it's 59 cents a mile. Um, so just to give you a heads up, I did 20,000 miles last year at 55 cents a mile. It's like $11,000 I'm getting back for mileage. Now you can claim that or, and then you can claim like parking. If you pay to park your car at the airport, tolls as you're driving your car, you can still claim. Um, or you could do actual expenses where you don't get mileage. So kiss that $11,000 goodbye. But you can claim gas, you can claim oil changes, car washes, car detailing, um, insurance, interest on a, on a car payment. If you have to get your car repaired. So if you're driving a clunker and you have a lot of car repairs, that might be a better bet for you. Um, <laughs> but you need to look into it. You need to talk to somebody and figure out what's going to be best for you. Um, for me, I'm going standard again, but I just got this car, which means for the rest of the time that I'm using it for business, I have to claim it as standard. So that's where you need to make sure you're doing your research and what's going to be best for you. And then it just has other stuff. So let's go ahead and close this one. Okay, and now let's look at mine. So not to complicate anything, um, but this is what I'm doing now. You can see there's already stuff filled in on here. This is for 2019. Okay, so let's do stop share. And let's talk about 2018, because um, this is going to be the easier way for you. And I'm noticing that the sun is not in my favor here today. Um, so this is what I have done. I have gone through and printed it out. And let's share the screen again, actually because it's gonna to be too hard to see the one I'm looking at. So the one I have printed in my hand is very similar to the one you're seeing on the screen. So what I've done is I've taken that tax document that I just went over with you and I've broken it down and only kept things that pertain to me. And what I'm doing with my system, and this is for this year, so this is 2019 that you're looking at right now, we're only a month in, but as I'm purchasing stuff for my business and having an expense, back in the day, this is what I used to do. When I say back in the day, like it was forever ago, it was literally a month ago. I would have this folder and on the folder it says tax file. And then whenever I'd have a receipt or anything, I would drop it in here. And once a month I would go through this and I would hand write it onto the document. Now, that was a great system up until about September. <laughs> I stopped. I did it all year until about then. Um, so now I need to go through that and put it, track the rest. Um, but what I'm doing now is I'm doing it as I go. So that's where this is coming in. So this year I've already spent $16.95 on shipping labels. I haven't inputted any inputted anything from here yet. Um, team recognition and incentives. I'm tracking any money that I'm spending this month on that stuff. Earn my kit parties. I keep track of that. How much I paid out of my profit towards those kits. My office expenses, so as you can see, I bought some pens, um, I bought antivirus protection for my laptop, I'm going to claim that because I only use my laptop for business. The PR business supplies, I'm not going to add those as I go because I don't want to get myself confused on what I did and what I didn't do yet. That is a quick enough thing to do at the very end of the year. Um, shipping and packing supplies, I bought some hostess envelopes, 
Um, shipping, paid to PR, same thing. I'm not gonna, if I bought a roll of stamps, I would put that there, but I haven't. Um, but the shipping to pay to PR, PR, I'm gonna do at the end of the year. Food, so what have I spent on the team? Um, we did the pizza party thing. I met up with somebody when I was in Texas. Um, business meeting, so I paid for that. The booking blitz that we lost, I had to pay for a pizza party. Um, I highlighted that because I haven't gotten the bill for it yet. Um, and then all of our traveling. So um, I went to the team retreat in North Carolina. You can see I Ubered twice. Um, I stayed with somebody, so I bought her groceries, but I called that my travel because she let me stay at her house. I spent $71 while I was there. That was basically airport food and drinks. Then I went to Texas. Um, one thing I just realized I need to do on here is list the dates, but I'm um, going to go back and do that. February, if I don't go anywhere, I'll just delete it. March, I'm going to Vegas. April, I'm going to Partners in Business in Philly. You can see next to registration, I put $20 because I paid 20 bucks when I registered. Um, so that's all the stuff you can claim with that. Um, and then my legal stuff. So I wrote down what my mileage was January 1st. That's super important to do. Just like you want to make sure you know what your inventory is at, but that's easy enough to see what you claimed at the end of the year, as your year end. Um, and then I'll put my mileage, whatever it is, at the end of this year. Any charity donations, this includes whether you do um, something business related or not. So if you donate clothing, if you do a really full life, if you do give to the PBF, all of that stuff is a charity donation. You can write it off. Um, so I, I actually donated to a flower for a memorial. And I'm going to claim it um, because why not, right? Um, whatever I pay to have my taxes done this year through TurboTax. And then when I paid my um, quarterly taxes this year for last year, so when I did it, because they're due January 15th for the previous year, I had credit card fees. So I'm gonna write those off this year. As I pay my quarterlies this year, I keep track of it, federal and state. And then my bad debts when I get a bounced check, client refund checks, that sort of thing. Um, client refund checks, that's kind of a funny one for me because <laughs> I've had to write a couple checks recently because people have coupons and they tell me they have them and I forget to give them the credit for it until I realize after I go back um, when I get home. So I've been mailing out checks. So I would write that there because I collected the money and it's gonna show that I collected it, but I also wanna show that I gave it back. And then lost damaged packages, um, that is just the value that um, of the product when I had to replace it for her. Um, and then for my home office, I keep track of, you know, my gas bill, my rent, spectrum. I have to break out the internet still. Normally I just call them and say, hey, how much did I pay in internet costs last year? Because they can see it easier than I can looking at my bill. Um, and then my, my portion of my cell phone bill. And then taxes, school taxes, I have to pay all that stuff. So that is how I track on my end. Um, and I fill it out as I go. And then what I'm doing is I carry, I use one of these style bins. It's just a plastic milk crate from Walmart. They were like $3.88. They are the best thing in the world. Um, and what I'm doing is after I add stuff to that document, I'm just putting them all the receipts in order in the back of the bin. So I use a crate basically for each year as I'm holding on to things. Um, let me grab. Okay, so this is last year's. Oh, it's like 800 pounds, excuse me. So this is all my stuff from last year. It is chock full of 189 parties. And if I really wanted to, I could carry this into an accountant's office and be like, here's my stuff. All right, but I don't need to do that. If I were to bring my taxes in anyone, I'd be carrying this and that is it. Your tax person, if you're not doing it yourself, does not need to see everything. They need you to bring them numbers. So what I do to track, each hostess has her own um, folder. So now this is my paper system because I don't use pure sale. So each hostess gets a folder. I keep all her order forms from her party. And one thing you definitely have to make sure you're doing is if you're doing order forms or if you're doing pure sale, you need to make sure if you're checking things cash or check or cash check or card. Um, and then what I do is at the end, there it is, is a shipping cash and check and cards. So I know from this party, I collected $17.50 for shipping, $8.66 in cash, and $266 in cards. So you go through and you add up from every party how much money you collected. That's going to be important 
because you need to figure out how much money you collected from clients and how much money you paid pure romance. And that's really going to be the easiest way to figure out how much your profit is. You will also notice these documents might be something you get from PayPal or Square. Um, I don't know what the threshold is on these. Actually, I think I do. I think you have to do like 200 in sales. No, you have to do 200 transactions and 20,000 in sales, I believe, to get one of these. Um, not 100% sure, but like uh, my Square one is $44,000 and my PayPal one is $112,000. So I need to know how much I collected from clients because I've used my Square and my PayPal for non-pure romance things like a bad girl. So I need to know <laughs> how much was really business. Um, so make sure you're not using your accounts for things that are not pure romance related. Otherwise you're gonna have to be like me and you're gonna have to go through all of that mess and not everyone wants to have to do that, right? Um, so that's what you do. You go through, you add up what you collected and what you gave pure romance. That is the way that I claim my income. There may be other people who do it different. There may be ways that I don't even know about, right? So you, again, figure out what's good for you. And then another thing you're gonna wanna make sure you do, if you're using stamps.com, you can run a report. This is seven pages of every time I bought postage. And I know that I paid $7,800 in postage just to stamps.com. So you wanna make sure you're adding up how much you're paying with those providers if you're using them. And then you also want to hold on to your calendar from the previous year or all your years. This is super important because you should be documenting every time you had a party. So I put my parties in bold permanent marker so I can see where I was and when. Again, this is just to back up your story with the IRS should you ever get audited. And the other important thing to share with you ladies, one of the most important things is your mileage tracker. So I just use this little dinky, it's a really small planner from the dollar store. On the inside, I will write what my mileage started at, what it ended at, and what I drove for business. And what you'll see is on every page, if you were to flip through this entire book, I can tell you at any given time where I was, whose party it was, what their exact address was, what my odometer said when I got in my car, and what my odometer said when I got out of my car. This is my mileage log. You can get an app to do this for you. You can create your own system however you want. But I have found leaving this little book, I leave it right in my um, side compartment on my door, is the easiest way to track my mileage. If I get in my car, and maybe I wasn't planning on going to Michael's to buy thank you cards, but I got an email and there was a sale, I can just take out my book and write, oh, Michael's, put their address and drive there. If I was doing any other type of system, might not be that handy to do so. So that is how I track. Um, that's pretty much all I got for you for tax preparation. I hope this was helpful. Um, moral of this video, I could have done this whole video in three minutes and told you just to use that tax organizer. It is really a lifesaver. Hang on one second. Um, don't reinvent the wheel, okay? That came directly from corporate. It tells you everything you need to know, everything you can be claiming, and if you think of something else that's not on there, you can always find out if it's something you're eligible to claim. So I hope this was helpful for you. Don't go crazy. Don't worry about, you know, paying an accountant to manage your books throughout the year. You really do not need to. It can be so simple. All you need to do is keep track of where you're spending your money and what it's on and saving your receipts, tracking your mileage, and just keeping yourself organized. You literally saw this milk crate. That is my whole year in one spot. My calendar, my mileage log, every pure romance invoice and every invoice from a client is right there next to me on the floor right now. So it can be so simple. And if you do it as you go, get in the habit of doing it once a month. That's what I did all last year. My tax prep is pretty much done. I just have to go through this folder from the last four months and I'm done. I'm ready to file and add up my invoices. And that's it. Like it is ready to go. Okay. So keep it simple. Do yourself a favor. Do it every month. And don't overcomplicate something that doesn't have to be overcomplicated. That is the moral of my story. So I hope this was helpful and I hope you ladies enjoy tax season as much as I do.